Well hello there, and welcome back to another tank review. I'm Corny Swiss, and today we'll be looking at the T-95, a rank 5, 7.0 battle rating American tank destroyer. Now as with all reviews, if you want to see a certain part of this uh, video, all the various pieces and parts are time stamped down below, so feel free to click on those, and they'll take you where you want to go. But if you want to hear the garage portion of the review, let's get started. So the T-95 is basically the the other version of the T-28, the premium tank destroyer. This uh, never left prototype stage. Uh, there were two prototypes built. One was destroyed via an engine fire, and the other one sat in a field for probably, I think it was about 30 years before eventually being found and now is on display at a museum. It, the goal behind this machine was to break through the Siegfried line. Uh, it has tremendous frontal armor, and its goal was to simply roll up to the line and blast through the fortifications and lead the attack on the German fortifications. It was never used, and it never left the prototype sta uh, stage, like I said. And, I mean, partly because uh, Allied air superiority was too great and the front was moving too fast. So, this thing really never saw... Well, I mean, it, it never saw combat, basically. But it is a really interesting machine. It's sort of the last machine that's designed to do one thing really well, and that is take hits from the front. Now, as we'll see in War Thunder, this can be a little more tricky. So, here's a T-95. Like I said, rank 5, 7.0 battle rating, 86.2 tons. It's very heavy, 500 horsepower at 2,600 RPM, and it's really slow. Uh, this is a very bad power to weight ratio. I'm not going to bother calculating it. It's bad. Uh, 13 kilometers per hour top speed. Not very good. Now the interesting thing about this tank is you actually get to 12 kilometers an hour, which is the effective top speed of this tank, uh, pretty quickly. You just will never exceed that. It's It just will not go faster than that. The fastest I've ever seen this thing go is I got it to 14 because two tanks were pushing me. You know, it it takes a lot. And they were pushing me downhill. It takes a lot. This thing won't exceed 12, really, uh, on normal circumstances. Maximum inclination, 30 degrees. Usually heavy tracked vehicles can go up a 41 degree slope. The issue this thing has is it's so heavy and it is so slow that it just can't manage more than 30 degrees and that can be a problem sometimes. Turret rotation speed 11.8 degrees per second that's just the gun arc here or that's the traverse of the gun here basically it can traverse its arc in about a second which is nice. The gun arc isn't great but it's you know it's not bad could be better. Vertical guidance 5 degrees of gun depression 19 degrees of elevation same deals on the T28 the gun depression, you're so low to the ground that you really, you kind of don't need more than 5 degrees. And your weak spots are on the top of the tank, so being hull down really doesn't matter in this tank. Um, so gun depression matters a little less. Gun elevation, between the two, it's gun elevation is always the, the one you care less about. But in this case, it's the same deal. Gun elevation, 19 degrees, that's fine. It's whatever. Now we come to what many people are looking for in this tank, the armor. When we pull up the armor, you'll notice a big red chunk right here. This big red chunk is 305 millimeters of armor. The gun mantle is 292 millimeters of armor. And you will note, as soon as I line it up, that the gun mantle is actually backed up most of its uh, width by the hull armor. You don't try and penetrate the gun mantlet and the frontal hull in this red area of a T95. This, there's angle, there's sloping, it looks weird. Even when it's just 305 millimeters, it's really tough to penetrate and most guns just simply can't do it. Especially uh, most guns at the 8.0 battle rating can't do it. Also a common misconception or something that was true in World of Tanks that is not true here is that this lower plate is a weak spot. Absolutely not. It's 133 millimeters. Sure, that's that's weaker than the upper plate, and then I guess the front of the tank. But it's sloped back at 60 degrees. It's over 300 millimeters thick. 
it's effectively just as thick as this massive amount of armor here. So this isn't a weak spot by any means. If, there, if the T-95 is coming over a ridge, maybe you can hurt him there, but no. There, there are really no frontal weak spots from the roof down on this tank. All right. There are these shoulder bits here, which are 101 millimeters thick, but they also lead into nothing. This is, you know, side plate. The hull of this tank is actually basically the T-28, but just an extra set of tracks bolted on, some extra spaced armor, and that's basically it, right? So, shooting here really doesn't get anything done. It's, it's not going to do anything. Now, the weak spot that everyone knew about in World of Tanks, and that is kind of the bane of this tank to some degree, are these cupolas on top. There's two of them, same as the T-28. And just like the T-28, 76.2 millimeters. That's rough. It means just about every gun this thing faces can penetrate and destroy it through the cupolas. Some tanks are better at it than others. Enter IS-3, IS-4, IS-2. Those are all pretty good uh, options against this tank. Uh, Ferdinands are good. I mean, just about most of them. The Panthers... Not so much, but King Tigers can and will penetrate this. Um, Ferdies will, Yak Tigers will. These are just incredibly weak. And the issue this tank runs into is that they're on the top of the tank, right? If if these were 300 millimeters each and un impregnable, right? And the lower plate was, I don't know, 100 millimeters thick. I would. This tank would do a lot better, I think. Because there's a lot more ways to cover this than there are to cover this. There's actually basically no way to cover these two cupolas. They're always going to be exposed. What does that mean for you when you're driving this tank? It means you have to stay back, just like the T-28. you got to stay back, I find it, about 800 meters or so. Uh, inside 800 meters, the guns, the variance of the guns become such that they can and will hit and penetrate this outside of 800 meters. Uh, they'll skip the top. They'll hit the top of the tank or things like that. They, they won't hit these plum and they won't penetrate and do damage. So, yeah, 800 meters to me has been the magic spot where if I'm over 800 meters away from a target, they won't destroy me. They could if they get lucky, but generally not. The big difference with the T95 over the T28 though is a side armor like I've already alluded to. It has an extra set of tracks bolted on. You know, that's nice. It adds to the um, defective armor of the lower side of the tank because it's something else that can eat the shells for you. You also have these side skirts which are 101 millimeters thick, right? 76.2 up near the front, but this isn't covering anything important. It's just track. So, 101. Point well, 102 basically, where it matters. You have tracks behind that, and then you actually have the hull of the tank, which is 50.8 millimeters. So there's a lot of armor on this lower part of the hull. Even on the upper part, 63.5 millimeters, sloped back at 58 degrees. You know, that's this bit right here, so that's not bad. And then you have the hull of the tank, which i, I got to try and highlight here, which is also 50.8 millimeters thick. So... This section of the hull is actually fairly tough, too. You know, shooting at it like this is very rarely going to cause a penetrating and damaging hit. You, a lot of times, have to get right up next to it and plant your gun right here to penetrate. If, it's, if you're on a down slope, yeah, good luck. This, this, will, bounce, this will bounce your shell. Um, I've had people shoot at me from a down slope, like right here, up into the tank, and they just bounce all day. Because it's just too thick. The sloping is just too great. The upper part of the side hull is this bit right here, 63.5 millimeters, and is significantly thinner and also doesn't have the advantage of extra armor behind it. This is the side armor that's weakest, right? And it's certainly a very viable place to shoot this tank, all right? So that's usually where you want to go for if you have the side of this tank. Don't shoot below this kind of center line on the upper part of the hull. Try and line up right. Don't shoot above this line where the green stops right up there don't shoot above that or don't shoot below that because all this is just armor up here less so 
Cupola, again, a weak spot. It's flatter here, so hitting this is a good idea too. Not the same on the other side, but you get my drift. Now, the rear is actually interesting. It's 50.8, so it's not good, but the engine block is back here, right? That means that the engine will actually take hits for this thing, and the engine's too large and too thick to uh, really cause damage to the crew other than set the fire on tank, which is a problem, obviously, but you generally won't knock this thing out sh quickly from the rear. You'll usually have to burn his fire extinguishers out and then let him burn out. So the sides are where this thing gets wrecked. And if we look at the x-ray, you can kind of see why. So talking about the cupola again, same deal as on the T28. If they penetrate this cupola, we'll talk about the front one right here. Penetrate, the shell is going to bounce down into the tank and explode. All right, driver, loader, ammo, 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 ammo. Here's the gunner sitting over there, this commander back there. Just ammo everywhere. The tank will be destroyed. If it's a Russian AP shell, this tank, if penetrated here, will either take severe damage and be basically knocked out or will be knocked out. Uh, German guns, a lot of times, if they're firing their AP, will have similar effects. Usually, I've come to notice that with German tanks, it usually takes two. With Russian tanks, it generally takes one. But sometimes with German tanks, it takes like three. Sometimes with Russian tanks, it takes two. Or sometimes either one can just one shot you. Right? So yeah, it depends. But usually Russian tanks are way more effective at this because they have larger caliber shells. Right? So these cupolas are really the bane of this tank. From the side, you'll actually notice that the ammo is covered by that uh, side plate. So it's very difficult to hit this ammo. But if you do penetrate here, like right there where the commander's cupola kind of flattens out this side armor the shell will get in here and explode and cause some serious damage but you can see how the engine and transmission which is rear mounted all kind of block the crew from uh, pain when it, it gets penetrated so that's i guess a nice design feature armor in the back via the transmission and the engine but it does set the tank on fire which is a little bit of an issue so yeah a pretty it's very similar layout to the uh, t28 now let's talk about the gun. So the gun, 105 millimeter gun, same gun as the T28. You start off with a standard AP shell, the T32, 18 kilogram shell, 975 meters per second muzzle velocity. At a zero angle of attack at 10 meters, you have 258 millimeters penetration, 218 at 500, 178 at 1500, and 155 at 2000. So this shell is good enough to penetrate the side of every tank that it'll face out to re out to uh, long ranges it doesn't matter if you get the side of a tank you can penetrate it the issue it sometimes runs into is like is3 is4 it can it can penetrate and destroy is3s is4s from the front it's just difficult because it's a armor piercing shell but it doesn't have an explosive damaging effect so when it ricochets into the tank it uh, it's just straight line damage. It doesn't explode and cause internal uh, lots of internal damage. So it's a little bit of an issue, and it's something you'll probably see in the replays where um, this shell, if this shell had a damaging effect, I would give up penetration some penetration value for a damaging effect, well, a better damaging effect on this shell. But it's very serviceable. T twenty nine E three shell. It's an armor piercing. It's an APCR shell. 11 kilogram shell, so it's actually pretty heavy for an APCR shell. Uh, 1,128 meters per second muzzle velocity. At a zero angle of attack, you have 315 millimeters penetration. At 500 meters, you have 285 millimeters. At 1,500, you have 223. And at 2,000, you have 196 millimeters penetration. This shell can penetrate, I mean, every tank in the game, basically, from the front. Uh, the same deal... It's less effective against like IS-3. It can still destroy IS-4. Uh, mouses, I, I usually carry some of this for like mouse because uh, these things can go clean through the front of a mouse's turret and really cause some problems on the inside. So a very good APCR shell. One you should you should have some of because it uh, it really helps out when you run into things like mouse and like um, just 
maybe targets that are hull down, difficult to penetrate, and you really need that raw penetration power to punch through the front of their tank. So it's a good thing to have. Then you have the HE shell, and my same argument from my T28 review I think still holds. This has not been effective for me. I carry it because I've been experimenting with it, but I've found it to not be effective. And um, your mileage may vary. I've seen people... I've heard, well, people have told me that they've had success with it, but I haven't had it myself. So I can't, I, I can't comment on whether you really should have any of this on your tank because 105 millimeter just isn't, it really isn't a tremendous caliber at this tier. It's average. You know, let's think of opponents. I mean, Russians have 100 millimeter and 122 millimeter. Germans have a 105 in the King Tiger, a 128 on the Mouse and on the Yag Tiger. Uh, an 88 on the Tiger II, but the Tiger II is slightly lower battle rating, and it's a very effective 88 millimeter gun. So, 105 is basically smack dab in the middle. It's average, and um, it it just doesn't. The only thing it's really good for is destroying AAA, which you know ZSU 57-2. Those can be a problem, but other than that, eh, I wouldn't bother. So, as an overview, T95. Armor from the roof down is tremendous on the front. Armor from the side, about halfway up the side down is tremendous. Rear is very sneaky because of the transmission and the engine. These cupolas, though, if you could chop these off and put like little viewports elsewhere or figure something out where you don't need these, uh, it would be, this tank would be impregnable from the front. But they're here, and they're a serious weak spot that you need to figure out ways of uh, minimizing their exposure. Whether that's by, I don't know, poking around a, a ridge that covers this one, you know, like a corner where this is covered and you can fit your gun around and only this one's exposed. That way it's 50% less likely they'll penetrate, you know, one of these because one is covered. It's a 0% chance for one and, a, you know, whatever percent chance for this. So you really need to be conscientious of Okay, how far away am I? How easy is it to hit these things? Um, the gun, my rate of fire, 18.8 .8 second reload time. That's, I mean, I have a decent crew. That's pr that's pretty good. It's not bad. And the gun lacks some punch simply because the uh, the AP ammo doesn't have an explosive damage effect. But it is adequate to deal with targets. It's not like you're going to be slinging a wet noodle. I mean, it can feel like that sometimes, but... No, it, the gun is adequate. The armor is what matters on this thing, but these cupolas, though, it, they're a problem. But anyway, let's move on to the replay, shall we? So here we are in a realistic battle on uh, Carpathians. And I guess the same tip holds true as it did in World Tanks. Don't bother pushing a T95. There's a top speed for a reason. <laughs> There's a reason that it can't exceed 13 kilo it, well, can, but the reason it goes 12 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's very hard to push this thing and make it go any faster than it goes already. And another issue that the T95 runs, in, runs into is that you're generally confined to sort of one portion of the map. Uh, what do I mean by that? This entire replay, all of it, is going to happen within I think within this square that I'm in now I think I'm gonna go out of it for a brief second and then come right back into it and that square would be what is that F3 I'm gonna spend my entire game in F3 and it, it's not because I wanted to I actually really didn't want to but a lot of times circumstances make it so that you have to you have to stay in one spot because you can't move forward and you can't uh, you can't safely move forward and you really need to. Now when I spawned in I wasn't really paying attention to the map so in this situation I'm not sure which spawn I would have taken. Uh, I ended up taking the northernmost spawn just simply because out of habit. This is actually not a bad position for the T95. It's extraordinarily unlikely that they will penetrate and cause me damage at this range. Uh, 
I, I can basically do whatever I want. I can sit here and shoot at them all day long, and there's very little they can do about it. And I do have the, the, the gun to penetrate them. Now I have to hit them where I want to hit them, and the upsloped front plate of a T-44, while being a target I can penetrate, is a difficult nut to crack at this range. Now, it's all kinds, the only downside is, is how low my tank is to the ground, so it's very difficult for me to actually land shots on these guys because there's not a lot of their tank I can see. And as you get higher velocity guns, it's actually very difficult to loop shots over hills and things like that. Like a SU-152 or an ISU-152, I could be landing shells into the cap circle all day long. I could just be shelling it. Because the firing art, the, uh, what's it called? There we go, I got the T-44. Because the muzzle velocity is such that you can just kind of lob them in. It's almost like indirect fire from an artillery piece. Now... I am being tipped off that there's at least one IS-2 over here, because our AI are exploding. It's usually a good indication of enemy activity. Now an IS-2 is a difficult, well it's, it's not a difficult proposition for me, but it's something I'd rather not deal with, because at this range he is a threat to me. But he did just shoot, I think the Walker Bulldog, so I need to rush around over here as quick as I can and try and get some shots into him and maybe try and disable and destroy him so there he is clearing this bush I'm gonna turn there we go nice hit right into the ammo in the back of the turret knocked him out so and this is what I'm talking about the gun is very adequate with dealing with IS-2 um, and IS-2 can destroy T-95s so, I think the IS-2 is what I, oh, I did just bounce an IS-2 from the, off from the side, that's that uh, sloped armor, or that's the spaced armor, it was, he's above me, so that sloping is actually less, but I was able to, but the tank was able to bounce it, and you just saw a shell come in there directly from my cupola, and I think it went low and hit the roof of the tank or something like that. What I'm doing right here is I'm using the machine gun to try and chop down some of these trees so I have a better field of view because although I would like to have concealment the issue I have is that I need to know where they are this tank does actually turn very very quickly I know people are have been or saying that in realistic it doesn't no the t95 actually in my opinion turns very quickly uh, given what it is uh, once you get it into I think second gear was it this thing spins like a top I mean, it's really quick. The T-28 doesn't turn very as fast. But I think it has something to do with the extra tracks on the side. Gives it more, um, better ground resistance or something. It just allows it to spin like a top. Now, it isn't like in World of Tanks where you could very easily waggle your front and uh, dissuade people from shooting your polos because... The issue it has is that in War Thunder, the tanks, you know, they have a transmission basically. And the transmission will prevent you from moving very quickly side to side. But it does turn very well. It's extremely difficult to circle a T95. And very few tanks can actually pull it off. A mouse can certainly not circle a T95. Uh, it's never happened to me, and I sincerely doubt it'll happen to any of you. But I really am getting hammered by these two IS-2s. And I really would have liked that one to uh, gone in. But both of those shots on that guy were just unlucky. One skipped off his engine deck because it was a horrible angle. And that one hit a very awkward section of his tank. So it didn't penetrate. Ouch. Just like rammed my hand into my desk. And this guy played this extremely well. He knows that if he stops, I can penetrate and destroy him. All right, but he also knows that if if he stops and aims his shot, he can probably knock me out. But the issue is, is my if you look at it in terms of our margins of error, his margin of error is much higher because it has to he has to hit my cupola's plumb with a big Russian gun. 
I have to hit the front of his turret with my American gun, which is kind of accurate. So, if we were to look at each other and both fire at the same time, who's more likely to survive? I am. He's more likely to be destroyed. So, he's going to keep, like, poking out and f just sort of firing quickly and then back in using his reverse speed to just back right back up. And it gives me a more difficult time shooting him. Because I don't want to stop. I d really kind of don't want to stop moving, which is why I'm backing up to increase distance. But he's going to... The thing is, is, if he gets enough opportunities, he eventually will penetrate and cause me some problems. The thing is, is that he has a better position because I'm out in the open. He's behind a hill. Now, granted, he has to come out from behind his hill to shoot me. But the thing is, is I'm a T-95. There's really only one place I can be. It's not like he's going to come around this corner and all of a sudden I'm going to be to his left. No, I'm going to be in the exact same spot. You know, I'm a, I'm a T-95. It's, I'm not going anywhere. I've backed up to give myself an opportunity to increase my uh, margin of error and give myself a better chance of bouncing his shot. And I'm kind of just waiting for it. This was unfortunate because the gun depression wasn't enough for me to uh, get down there. And I actually just, well, it's just my track. You'll get tracked a lot in the T-95, but it's okay. A lot of times I'd say resist the urge to repair it. Your tank can turn really quickly. So a lot of times you're not trying to move anyway. So why bother repairing the tracks if you're not trying to go anywhere? I have no intention of driving forward. I have every intention of sitting in this spot, spinning like a top, and dealing with these two threats to my front. If someone else shows up, I can't comp I can't fight three tanks at once. I can fight two tanks in this situation because they're both to my front. If the IS-2 who's on the hill decided to come off the hill, not like the way he did, that was a very awkward shot. If he had instead of coming out the front of the little castle there and gone around the side, he would have caused me some serious issues. But as it stands, no, not really. My front is still facing the enemy, so I'm a happy T-95. And that's a serious issue for him. <laughs> now it's just this one IS-2 to my front. Now that there's only one target, I decide to repair, because my gun arc is such that I'll be able to deal with these with him to my front, and if he starts blitzing me, I'll be able to cancel the repair in time. So repairing now is a good idea. There he is. Ah, uh, we really needed one of these to to go into the face of his turret. We've already gone through once, so going through again would probably knock him out. I mean, this game, it's not lost. It's close to being lost, but not quite. I will say, though, that the win rate of this tank is not very good. It's about, for me, it's about 15%, which is rough. But that's mostly due to two tanks in particular. And I don't think we'll, that'll be forever the case. But my tracks are repaired. And here I was having a real good think about what I should do. I need to get a situation where I get the drop on him, where he has... That was really unfortunate. <laughs> I'm going to take that opportunity to try and reposition, because it's going to take him longer to come out next time. So, probably what I should have done is move to the right and gone up next to the hill. The issue was, is I didn't want him to climb the hill and then be able to come down on me, because that negates my armor. He can just shoot into the top of my tank. I want to keep him on level ground because it gives me the best chance of defeating him. So I'm s kind of moving a little bit. I can't move very much. But the goal is to get over here just a little bit so that when he comes around the corner, I'm in a different spot. And maybe that's enough for him to maybe miss a beat and give me let me fire first as he has to turn his turret at to me. But this guy played it really, really well. There wasn't a tremendous amount that... There wasn't a lot I could do, I don't think. I mean, I definitely could have killed him. I got unlucky, I think. 
There was a like that shell probably should have gone in. But there you go, cupola shot. Bam, exploded. Killed everybody. Ammo. Boom. It's kind of just what happens with this tank. It but you see the the point is that this tank the T95 is not you know a paper tank. It's in terms of armor. It's very durable. Just you have to it's niche. You have to put it in the right situation to be durable. But anyway, let's move on to the next replay, shall we? Alright, so here we are in the next battle. It's another realistic battle, and this time it's on Eastern Europe. Now, target markers are on in the replay, because I forgot to start recording immediately. But don't worry, we'll pick up the recording maybe about, I don't know, 60% of the way through the battle, as I finally remembered. But suffice to say, I'm going to turn battle markers on so that it's more clear what's happening. Because I feel like in the replays, that sh you should do that. Uh, it gives people a better understanding, and it also, honestly, it lets me see what I missed. Uh, when I first watched this back, I was surprised at how many things I missed. Just straight up could have seen, didn't see, you know. Things that I very easily could have made out, but I didn't. Now, there are a couple lower tier tanks in this game. We're not, I don't think we're top tier, but we're close, if we aren't. But I'm just moving up along this road. This is actually one of my, I guess, preferred spots to be in. Now, I did see this KV-2 moving across the side there. And I wasn't sure how I felt about the KV-2. You know, because he's not going to penetrate my armor. Right? Even my cupola, I think, he won't penetrate. There really isn't anywhere on my tank he can hit and... Well, okay, he could penetrate the rear of my tank, but there's no way I'm going to let a KV-2 get to my rear. Just, it won't happen. I can spin so much fast. I can spin so fast. Oh, off to the, the right, I saw that King Tiger coming in. Now, situational awareness, he is the biggest threat to me. So I'm going to come over here, and he actually doesn't know I'm here. T-95s are actually extremely sneaky. A lot of times, they're in spots that you kind of wouldn't think of them to be in. The first shot I went in knocked out his horizontal drive. I think also got his gunner or something, something to that effect. T-95s, because they're so low profile, are actually, like, really sneaky. And there are a lot of times where tanks have just kind of ignored... Well, I mean, they've ignored me because I don't think they saw me. You know, it's a low profile machine. doesn't move very fast. So a lot of times you find it in positions that you normally don't expect tanks to be in. Right? If that uh, King Tiger was facing M103s, M47s, the position he would have been in, they would have already occupied and been a problem by now. Right? And he didn't run into any, so he kept pushing forward because that means that they're not there. Ah, but the crouching T95 was there. Now, with the T95, you also got to be aware of terrain features because it's very easy to get sort of bogged down in inclement ter terrain. There's that KV-2. Turning to face him, putting my armor to the front. I don't care if you hit me in the face with your 152mm derp gun. It is a weak derp gun. It matters little to me. First shot went in. I believe it got his horizontal drive or something to that effect. Because it's entirely safe for me now to move forward. I mean, it's... I'm pretty sure it's safe anyway. KV-2 is definitely not going to circle me. And I don't think he even has the gun depression to shoot down on my roof. So I'm just going to line up, put a shot right through his front plate. Didn't kill him. Set him on fire, which is nice. Checking my flank. Staying up here because from this position, there literally is no way he can kill me. And I'm just going to sit here, wait for the reload. And another allied tank is going to come around and get the kill. I believe I get that shot in, which I think hit his horizontal drive, really didn't do anything. Spamming the machine gun, he's on fire. And Ally Tank is going to claim the kill, which is fine. I really made mincemeat of killing this guy, so whatever. I go ahead and pump the shot into him anyway, because why not? And now, seamless transition, we're going to pick up with the actual replay little bit of a jump. I apologize for that. Could have been more seamless. But now 
the awkward position I'm in is... Oh, an allied tank just got knocked out. By what, I imagine? Said it was an SU-100. Where is this SU-100? Aha, there he is. For some reason, he has not seen the T-95 parked on the causeway. It's awkward for him. And he's going to continue to push around this corner and attempt to put shots into the rears of our tanks. And he gets a shot off. I put a shot into the back of his casement. Probably would have been better to go for the engine shot. Normally with an explosive shell, that would have knocked him out. But with the standard armor-piercing shell, eh, less so. Now he's going to be a little tricky. And, and this is where I'm going to say that the T-95 actually spins like a top. It's extremely reactive. The thing is, you have to... So, I, I don't know what this SU-100 is honestly going to do. I'm expecting him to try and flank around. Which, from this position, means I'll win. I find it very unlikely he'll be able to kill me. And But I, I can't see him, really. And I want to sort of cut off his avenues. And I'm not sure he's actually going to come around. So, I'm, full broad, I'm almost full broadside on. And he's going to make his appearance... The replay is going to lag a little, so I won't be able to say exactly when. Boom, there he is, and he's turned. Spinning this tank around. He fires, hit me, I fired, destroyed him. Most tanks would not have been able to react that fast. This thing can spin. Now, you saw the lurch, where it turned, and then it lurched and turned even harder. That was changing gears. Once you get into the, the real turning gear, this thing will just do donuts and it's pretty fun pretty cool so solid game in a t95 notice how i really didn't go anywhere i'm basically where i started and uh all i did was defend this causeway but the t95 while it doesn't get anywhere quickly it does the job most of the time if it's if it's in the right situation it, it's a really niche tank i mean it was built for one thing it does that one thing pretty well. It has an obvious weak spot, which just murders this tank. But when you can manage that, it can really, really impress you. So, let's move on to the final opinion, shall we? Alright, so opinion time. What do I think of the T-95? In World of Tanks, this was my favorite machine. I love my T-95. And I don't love it any less. Even though in War Thunder, it's, it, it falls into the same boat as the T-28. Um, I think the T-95 is over-tiered. I don't think it... Uh, as it stands right now, I don't think it belongs at 7.0. I think 6.7 is reasonable. Primarily because it's, it's been shown, I feel, that this thing is not invincible as we thought it was initially. Uh, the Cupolas can be penetrated by 6.7 battle rating tanks, can be penetrated by 6.0 battle rating tanks. Um, and you move on up the line, and where do tanks penetrate it at the 8.0 battle rating, which is the top of this thing's matchmaking and the top of the, the game's matchmaking? It's still the Cupolas. So if everyone shoots the Cupolas and everyone is penetrating the Cupolas, then it, it, to me it doesn't, it doesn't seem like 7.0 is right. It's, it's difficult for me to kind of... I'm finding it difficult to put my thoughts into words because to me it's logical that if the tank has an obvious weak, weakness that everyone can exploit down to the very bottom of its battle rating uh, spread, which is, you know, plus or minus one, so it's a 7.0 battle rating, so down to 6.0 and up to 8.0, then why is it at a 7.0 battle rating? Because... If it can be destroyed by, if it can be destroyed just the same as, uh, by, if it can be destroyed just the same as by a 6.0 battle rating tank as an 8.0 battle rating tank, and then, you know, it's a little interesting. And, and there are other tanks where that's also true, but I would argue they have something else going for them, like, um, Patton's, for example. They can be destroyed by most tanks in the game from the side. Um,. But the patents aren't based on armor, and they have speed and a potent gun to, to kind of, which causes them to be up-tiered. 
basically I'm arguing that the T95, its biggest weakness is its speed and the obvious weak, weak point, which negates its armor, right? A lot of times you'll find that people do not shoot the front of your hull. And if they are, it's because they think for some wild reason that they can penetrate. They won't. You will find almost exclusively that people are aiming for your optics. They're aiming for your cupolas and just spamming as many rounds as they can at it. Because if they hit it plumb, you will be destroyed, basically. Especially if it's a 122mm Russian gun or 128mm German gun. So, the issue it runs, at, and I've talked about this in previous videos, I, there are three things, in my opinion, that make it that make or break a tank in War Thunder. It's true with, I, f I feel like it can be applied to real life and also to World of Tanks. And those things are the gun, the gun which is kind of just its own category. And then the two categories that are mutually exclusive are armor and speed. You can't have armor and have speed. It, it just doesn't work, right? There isn't a tank that has impregnable armor to at its tier to and has the best speed. The T-54 is the only one you can maybe argue, and the IS-4 to some degree, but both tanks can be destroyed from the side. T-54 especially is very thin on the side, has very good frontal armor, but that frontal armor isn't invulnerable to the guns it faces, right? Think of an M103. That thing can very easily destroy T-54s. So... But the T-54, the reason it's been so potent, the reason the IS-4 has been so potent, is because it has speed. Speed is the real reason, and it has a gun that can deal with anything. The gun is... It doesn't really matter if the thing is fast or has armor. The gun can be tremendous. The Hellcat has no armor, tons of speed, and a great gun. The, like, T-50 has, you know, I, I think mediocre armor, really. I mean, it's, it's all about sloping and things like that, but it can be... It can be penetrated fairly easily if you um, approach it the right way and its gun isn't all that good you know it's it's a 50 millimeter quick firing gun and it doesn't really pack a punch but the tank is still good because it has so much speed it can get places it can flank it can circle it can do all kinds of crazy things so I think I've come to realize that speed is the most important thing uh, as long as you have an adequate gun and you have speed the tank will be effective, at least in War Thunder World Tanks, and I can't really argue for real life or not. Oops. Did we die? That was weird. My computer actually went to sleep. That's funny. But anyway, so speed is the most important. The T95 doesn't have the speed. It has an adequate gun, and the armor can be exploited. So it's just it's just a tough tank. I, I don't if you're a gr if if you have to pick a tank you're grinding for, don't pick the T95. Pick the M47, pick the M105, or not the M105, M, uh, M103, I'm sorry, completely forgot what the tank was called. The I think the M103 is a really, really good option. I, I would go for the M103 first because I really like it, but the M47 is a really, really good tank too, and it comes out of some really good tanks like the M46 and the Pershing. So, yeah, this should probably be the last, okay, well... Get this tank before the AAA. Uh, that's what I'm doing. And I don't regret that at all. I still love the T95. It's still my favorite tank. It's just uh, it's just a little sad that in War Thunder it's um, just not really that good. <laughs> but I mean, it has its moments. But it's so niche and so situational that those moments are rare and few and far between. So anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. This has been another tank review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them down in the comment section. Be more than happy to read and comment back and answer and stuff like that. And as always, I've been Courtney Swiss, and I'll see you next time.